this work again really references the macrocosm and microcosm of landscape. It's arranged somewhat like a, a television screen. Along the outside of the screen we think, see elements as small as the small vines by Gillian Scott and as large as the globe itself. Here we can see Australia separating from Antarctica. This uh, references a series of maps that I worked and reworked uh, which spans about 80 million years from 90 million years ago to 10 million years ago. Here we can see this, this ribbon, this line running up through here. Here's the east coast of Australia obviously and we see volcanism and rainforest through there. We can go back to a much earlier stage where the rift valley between Australia and Antarctica is opening up and of course the shape of the continents is, is very different to today. We have the outlines of the continents as they are now but the yellow areas are an approximation of what the continents looked like uh, back at, at those times and we can see there was a lot more land um, above water than there is today. Here we again have other elements of the large mountain ranges below the ocean which have come up through volcanism as Australia has torn away from Antarctica. Again another series of maps in which we see the ocean currents flowing through this rift between the two continents. This large yellow ribbon flowing through the work is a map of the main range in which I've altered the perspective to give an idea that one is flying across this area. We can see Prince Henry Drive, we could see in here is about the, the main range crossing, the highway, and just about here is where Gillian lives. This volcano references uh, Tabletop Mountain about 18 million years ago. It was an active volcano and this is what we call a volcanic bomb which has been hurled out of this volcano. So it's, it's really traversing 18 million years from uh, back when, when the active volcanism was really occurring to now where we have um, our roads and suburbs and our lifestyle as we have it here. This is uh, a leaf of the silky oak by Gillian and a series of my drawings of ferns. This is a map by uh, Ed Willey where we can see the volcanoes of Toowoomba and uh, across this area we really see illustrations by myself of the volcanoes uh, of Toowoomba. There's other maps in here and of course some almost comical details. We could see a, a bush turkey standing guard over his mound uh, referencing the bush turkeys of the Boyce Gardens. Uh, we can see the hoop pine and bunya pine and rising magma coming up. Uh, again Ed Willey's maps uh, embedded within the work. There's other elements in, in this work as well where we see uh, the early Australians coming into Australia and arrows pointing to the way in which we believe that they moved into the continent. Other maps again of the volcanism and this is a particularly interesting diagram showing the formation of an ancient continent that we call Rodinia, the breakup of Rodinia, the formation of Pangaea, the breakup of Pangaea, the formation of, well, uh, Gondwana. Gondwana is, existed for much longer and was part of Rodinia, part of Pangaea. And then recent times, relatively speaking, the dispersal, breakup of Gondwana into Africa, South America, Australia, Antarctica, New Zealand and uh, other continents. And of course the flowing line work throughout this, this artwork references 
the flowing of life through time. I again use a series of maps based on the Mesozoic times from the uh, early Triassic to recent times and again we can see here some uh, diagrams of volcanism. Uh, there's many ways in which volcanoes form. The volcanoes of Toowoomba were created as Australia drifted over what we call a hot spot and you can imagine a river of lava flowing up through the crust of, of the earth and then breaking into many smaller tributaries uh, which has led to the number of volcanoes that Toowoomba, that formed Toowoomba. So Toowoomba is not one volcano, Toowoomba is the sum of many volcanoes. This painting is of the ground floor in the rainforest. All the stuff that comes down from the trees. You've got uh, bunny, uh, hoop pine cones, various vine leaves around here, a stick with fungi that are rotting it down, and two pieces of hoop pine bark. And then the lovely yellow leaf is a juvenile leaf of a brachychiton tree. And this is a big red boletus fungus. And some of the leaf litter I have brought in, it's here. Those are the seed pods of the Rhodosphera tree. This is a piece of bark off the hoop pine. Can you see why it's called a hoop pine? It pulls to pieces and you get rings of bark. And that's just a little fungus that I put in there to make it stay in place. There's more fungus here, hoop pine leaves and their seeds. and a hoop pine cone, which is uh, beginning to come apart, very prickly. And down here we have, slightly withered now, a piece of cowrie pine leaves. And the cowrie pine was, I like to think of it as dinosaur dinner very, very ancient group of plants. This work was created with the help of Heath Pakeman, who created our wonderful partition. It's based on a series of maps from 90 million years ago to 10 million years ago. The maps were black and white when I started with this, and initially I created the work on the computer. I then printed the maps out and transposed them onto sheets of paper in which we traced them out onto this timber and heath then cut them out. We can see Antarctica, Australia, Tasmania and South America at the base of the work here. In a way it, it's, it looks like a, a, a cake in a sense, that it's, it's a deep time cake. Um, each one of these layers is a metaphor perhaps for sedimentary rock and the layers of sedimentary rock. The top area is really references uh, Victorian pictorial ideas on landscape and the pleasant undulating downs. So this is one way of thinking about landscape and landscape changing through deep time on a really big level and this is another way of thinking about landscape which is about changing the landscape and not working with environment but working to change the environment to suit our ideals. <laughs>